Hi, I'm Ann Lawrence, and welcome to episode 41 of Art This Week. Art This Week is our video podcast where we visit galleries and museums and speak with artists and curators about current exhibitions in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. This week, we visited Fort Worth Contemporary Arts and speak with Liam Gillick about his latest exhibition, short films of Liam Gillick, now on view at the gallery. Now, for Art This Week. This week, we visited Fort Worth Contemporary Arts, located at 2900 West Berry Street. Their current exhibition features several short films by the artist Liam Gillick. Gillick recently exhibited in the German Pavilion at the Venice Biennale, and he had a mid-career retrospective that just closed at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago. While at the gallery, Caroline spoke with him about his past, his inclusion in the Biennale, and his ideas about art. I'm Caroline Belanger with Art This Week, and we are very privileged to be with Liam Gillick today um, of the Young British Artist <laughs> Movement, oh, or really? YBA, uh-huh. also, I don't know about that, also but. dubbed a part of the Relational Aesthetics Movement. Mm-hmm. And my first question for you today was actually about that, because I've been doing a lot of reading about you, uh-huh. and I think I find you to be a self-aware artist that doesn't want to be pigeonholed, that you want to (laughs) keep all your possibilities Uh open. So how do you feel about those titles? Well, you know, everyone uses uh, these kind of terms to try to speed up the conversation. I mean, when we say pop art, we kind of know what we mean. Mm -hmm. But if you ask some of the people involved, they're very, they get squirmy and weird and they don't want to think about it that way speak to a conceptual artist about them being a conceptual artist, they usually try and evade it and try and avoid being called that. But of course we know that these terms are used in order to just kind of get the conversation going. So to a certain extent um, I accept it, but sometimes there's a good reason to sort of uh, correct it a little bit. I don't really think that I'm, if I'm a YBA I'm not a good one, if you see what I mean. (laughs) I don't fulfill the criteria properly. Do you see, you know, the relational aesthetics thing, I think probably a bit more. I mean, I'm still very involved with the, this French guy who wrote the book, as it were, relational aesthetics, and he's just written a long text on my work. So while I'm not sure I'd use both those words together, mm-hmm. um, I've certainly used the word relational and aesthetics, but not at the same time. And, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, maybe I'm more connected to that in the end. You know? Yeah, well that brings us to the question about you representing the German Pavilion mm-hmm. at the Venice Biennale in 2009. And a lot of uh, critics uh, f- found that an unusual choice, mm-hmm. not being German. Yeah. Um, you put on an amazing I- exhibition as well, playing with the space. Mm-hmm. So I'd love it if you could tell us a little bit more about how that came about. Yeah, I mean, historically speaking, in Germany, they the state doesn't appoint the artist. It's not involved, you know, like in Britain, the British Council, which is the overseas cultural body of Britain, basically appoints the artist. In Germany, because of historical reasons, um, it's not a good idea for the state or the nation to start appointing an artist, an official artist. So they give a lot of power to the curator, and the curator is given a lot of total freedom to do what they want. Mm -hmm. And this curator, happens to be someone around my age who really started working just after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Mm -hmm. And like me, was lucky enough to be able to work in a relatively border-free Europe where it was easier to travel suddenly for some people, easier to do things. We, and what he wanted to do really is to invite an artist who had been part of what Germany has been in the last 20 years, which is a place, a meeting place, and a place where other Europeans have come together to work and exhibit and do stuff and have ideas and he felt that if you if you never represent that you're giving a kind of lie to the this idea of the national pavilion or the national representation and you know uh, I also took it as a as a I always forget to say that I was kind of honored to do it Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I took it as a extreme compliment you know that, that 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 it would be seen that it could even be possible to do it you know so part of it's to do with the fact that I have always you know worked and traveled and tried to make use of what we could call the new Europe and the other part is because for him I symbolized something it was partly symbolic so that's kind of tricky but you know uh, they gave me a hard time just like a good 
German artist would be given a hard time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and on the other hand, I, 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 I met people who were so positive about it and so supportive that I, I sometimes uh, feel quite emotional about it, that, that, that people did transcend their, their normal interest in their own culture and really reached out to me. And I, I, I'm extremely touched by that. And I think it was, a, of course, I think it was a sign of incredible cultural maturity. <laughs> <laughs> they both invited me and, were, and gave me a hard time at yeah. the same time. And I know you don't particularly <laughs> um, like the concept of localizing art, but do you, as a result of this, and do you see yourself more as a European citizen, citizen or a UK citizen, or do you just not like to have those well, titles at all? You know, the thing is, I was taught by Americans, and my first collectors in London were it was an American guy who'd come in 1971 to open a gallery, and my first real good collectors were American, and basically since the mid-90s I've pretty much lived in the US. Mm -hmm. So what I find very interesting is that when I got to invited to the German pavilion, uh, no one really talked about the fact that I live in America. They talked about you being... They talked about me being British. What's very interesting is within... I was curious about this, so I looked up someone like uh, uh, William de Kooning, William de Kooning. And within two years of moving from Holland to the US, he was already being called an American artist. So this, is, this shows a kind of shift in our understanding, a kind of, I'd say it could mean that the US is less covetous, you know what I mean? Less anxious and, and, and is more sophisticated at recognizing difference and re retaining this sense that you keep your identity while you also are part of the American story. But on the other hand, I also think that it ruined the story in Europe if, if they kind of thought about me being influenced by American culture and living in this co context that, mm -hmm. that somehow it would be, uh, it would somehow ruin the story. Mm. But I always kind of enjoyed this, this uh, you know, I'm, I'm a displaced person, you know, I'm not really sure where I'm from. And I think there are good things about the European system, but there are extremely good things about the American cultural context that I could never give up. And I think it's very easy to kind of make a simple-minded cartoon image of American culture, but of course you it's cannot. deeply complex, deeply different. Um, it's not a monoculture. And I think as an artist it's possible to, uh, there's a lot of work to be done here. Do you see what I mean? Oh, completely. I'm actually a very displaced person myself. I've uh -huh. grown up in Australia, South America, uh, really? and Europe, as okay. well as, as Texas and New York. Uh -huh. So. Um, I always find when I'm in Europe, I love it, but then mm -hmm. I start to be like, oh, I want to go back to America. <laughs> and when I'm here, yes, exactly. I go, I want to go back to Europe, or I want to go back to Australia. But, you know, there's all these little different parts that make up a whole. Absolutely. And uh, so I completely understand where mm -hmm. you're coming from. Um, I've never gotten to express it in an art form, <laughs> however. <laughs> I just get to have these wonderful conversations. Um, where I can to see the best in the work and and, and if anything, just check when I think people are in danger of cancelling out what it is that's good about what they're doing. It's very hard to be sure when you've got two or three things in front of you as a young artist to know which one to choose. And it's much easier to just throw all three of them in because mm -hmm. you think, well, at least that'll show people that I know that they know that I know that I did something. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to do is to get people it's not the, the last show they'll do, it's not the, the final statement on their work. I'm trying to get them to make some precise decisions mm -hmm. and they'll never regret it. Have you learned anything from them? Yeah, absolutely. I've learned that there's um, art here that I've never really seen before, that I've never thought about, that there's obviously a very um, serious teaching staff here that are giving people really good guidance and that there's a kind of... Uh, a unique quality that I think is in the end related to something to do with the mood or the landscape or the something like that, that some of the artists would be horrified if, if you told them that. Mm -hmm. But you can see that it's, it's, the work is um, emerging from a particular place and, and I, I find that really interesting. And you're showing films or a film here films. at the Fort Worth Contemporary yeah. Arts. Um, 
what what exactly are you showing? <laughs> I, I well, don't know anything about it. I don't make You've films. You've been keeping so, a little secret. Yeah, I don't make films. So, okay. But the thing is, over 20 years, I've realized I have made quite a lot of videos and bits and pieces, and none of them make sense in relation to my work in general. Okay. They're all exceptions. They're all different. Some of them I never even thought of them as work at the beginning. I thought they were just documentation or it's me speaking at something. And over time, I've realized this is actually significant in order to understand something. Um, so it's very varied. Some of them are like, there's a little cartoon that I made with a, with a, a very serious animation, like computer-generated animation uh, company in London for the Tate a few years ago. Then there's a very long video of me trying to extemporize a whole book in public in Brussels, mm -hmm. about, again, about 12 years ago. And then there's tiny cartoons that I've made on the computer. And it really just, it's all over the place. And for me, I wanted to do something in this environment where you have a big student body who, um, you know, if they come out to the gallery here on the edge of the campus, that, that there might be a reason to spend a bit more time here. That they really, there's a lot of content that you could really spend like a few hours here watching stuff. And in the meantime, like sit on the floor and do the email, do your email at the same time, or something like that. That it's not a. I wanted to bring a, a, a really cheap retrospective <laughs> to a small storefront. Do you see what I mean? Definitely. Which is interesting, since you don't like the term retrospective. Really. Yeah, but I thought you know if you're going to do one, you do it here. Okay. And I can sit here and Aren't look at lucky? the look at the Radio Shack and the subway and watch people walking past and. That's my idea. I'm very happy in that kind of situation. Good. <laughs> well, we are so delighted to have you here and to have the exhibit up at Fort Worth Contemporary Arts. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in Texas. Thank you. I'm sure I will. That's it for Art This Week. We want to thank Liam Gillick for speaking with us. The exhibition is up through April 18, 2010. We also want to thank the Fort Worth Contemporary Arts, especially Christina, for letting us film in the gallery. More information about the gallery and this exhibition can be found at theartgalleries.tcu.edu. For those of you that have already friended us on Facebook or followed us on Twitter, thank you. If you enjoy our podcast, please tell your friends. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. This week we visited Fort Worth Contemporary Arts located at 2900 West Berry Street. Their current exhibition features several short films by the artist Liam Gillick. Let me just start over. More information about the gallery and this exhibition can be found at thegalleries.tcu. You can contact us at artthisweek at gmail.com. You can friend us on Facebook, just search for Art This Week, and you can follow us on Twitter. We will notify you when we post the latest episode. In addition, you can download our episodes from iTunes. Just search for Art This Week in the iTunes Music Library.